99X and the Morning X. Barnes and Leslie, you know, moments ago during Sleaze, I was teasing Ed Kowalczyk from Live, what's coming up, and then we had this thing going for a day that every time I said that, Leslie had to sing a live song. I screwed up. Let's bring Ed on. Hey, Ed. Ah. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Ed Kowalczyk. And I just had them, I had the producers pull a extrapolation of Leslie's last attempt. So you don't hear me here. We had it soloed out. Listen to this, Ed. I said, Thanks, okay, Barnes. Leslie. All right. Sing, sing a song. Here she goes. Here, here's our great attempt. Lightning. Oh. <laughs> I almost said striking. Light, I almost said lightning striking. What's going on with me? Okay, we're back. <laughs> Fram. I mean. Stop it. Light- I, thought, I thought you nailed the first, that first syllable. I thought it was pretty much not exactly like me. And then I sang Pain Lies on the Riverside. Barn, stop it. But Yeah, but she was like, Pain. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. I mean, you have to put that together for me. You could have saved her, Ed Kowalczyk, by saying, hey, Leslie, the original lyric was lightning striking. Stop it. Yeah, right. Anyway. Yeah, flipped it. Right, last minute. Having you back on, this is this is super exciting. How it are is. you? We're doing so great. I mean, we're just at the beginning of this year now. We're so excited to get moving. And um, we've done about four concerts this year. So far, four or five, four, five, a few of the acoustics thing we're doing um, and one of the big band ones. So we're just getting our wheels rolling and then uh, a quick trip down to to see you guys in Atlanta. And then we're off to uh, New Zealand, Australia, and then coming back through town in the summer. So lots going on. Man, if I could be any rock singer, I would be you because (laughs) the drama... You get to put in the songs, and then you get to lay back, and then you get to rise up. Barnes and you is get selling to, the drama. The way he obeys. I mean, you just get to, like, get up to the mic yeah. and, like, grab it. I mean, it's just, yeah, this, I become this, like, you know, as soon as the music starts to go, it's like I'm just, like, I'm just, yeah, I just completely take over. It just takes over me, and I'm just like this. Dan, I'm Jekyll and Hyde. I'm just, like, you know, I'm just pretty chill most of the time, but when that music starts, look out. I love I'm it. I can't wait. Let's get some Lakini's juice going, baby. I just love everything. That, you how, damn right. How old is your daughter now that you wrote Heaven right for? Oh, my gosh. She just turned 22 the other day. Oh, I thought that. Cause see, I, <laughs> when you yeah. put that song out, I was having a daughter who's about to turn 22, and that was like a song that really connected with me. And not your usual yeah. live song, but I love that song. No, it was a real, it was a, you know, the production was heavier, but it, yeah, it was lyrically, it was a real, uh, you know, diversion or like, you know, not diversion, but just, you know, a, a, a person, a, a different direction. And um, I've had two daughters after that. So it started a, a daughter trend. Oh, and they want songs too, probably. <laughs> and that work, still their work in progress. Yeah. Did they make you take them to a Taylor Swift show? Because, you know, Eddie Vedder just took his daughter to a Taylor Swift show. Oh, yeah. I've been to two. <laughs> Yeah, my my shoulders still hurt from holding my you know whoever which daughter I was holding two times two both both in Boston both at the stadiums great shows. Did you get the friendship bracelet? You got the little friendship bracelet, I'm sure. I no, I didn't get anything good. I was just the shoulders, <laughs> you know, the seat. <laughs> so Ed, I had a question for you. We're talking to Ed Kowalczyk from Live. Do you re- what was the name of that little club you guys started in? Was it the Chameleon Club? Because I remember we all went down there to see you guys do this little thing, and I was trying to remember the club. Yes, that is the uh, the Chameleon Club in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yes. I don't believe I, I can't. I, I, over the last few years, it's I've heard some things like it's either partially open, closed, or it's, maybe it's fully back open now. But um, a pretty legendary spot in that area because there really just wasn't very many places to play and. Um, we opened for the Pixies in there, wow. <laughs> like the original, like real, yeah. And in 1988 or nine, they came through. Um, it, it was just, it, it was one of those places that, you know, national really cool rock bands would would show up because regionally there was nothing else. You know, they were going to Pittsburgh or they were going to New York and like, oh, let's stop and play in Lancaster on the way, you know. And so we got lucky to have that. When you got, I mean, I remember my first introduction to live was like on one of those dumb shows like Night Tracks or something, like something, <laughs> like it played your video. And I was just mesmerized by, did you give it up? I mean, just watching this guy with this passion singing the song and I was forever hooked. I mean, that aesthetic, was that just, did that just come out? Like when I talked about the up down and just like the driving part and then the melodic part, or was that something you had planned to do or just accidental 
You know, I think it just, the way those songs are arranged and the way that I like to, to make the melody and the, the song kind of have those arcs and, and start, you know, in these sort of contemplative, slow places like, uh, you know, like Lightning Crash is real pensive and then blow up into yeah. something else. Um, that was really just to serve the lyric. You know, I think um, you can arrange things any different way you want. But for these lyrics and what I was trying to achieve in the vein of all the bands and artists that made me feel great at concerts like U2 and R.E.M. and all my face, I just wanted the songs to each one to have that impact if I could, if I could make it happen. And, um, you know, you get some that really, really, really landed and then some that not so much. But, you know, the whole idea was that, you know, the whole idea is that it was worked around this idea that, you know, by the end of this three and a half minutes, I've taken you somewhere. I've gone to a place and and and, and and you've come with me. And if I can make that happen a few times, wow, what a life, what a great accomplishment as a writer i can't really ask for anything more when you come through the next time and you're actually with us i in the in the room we have a a little game that we've played unless you weren't here we did it with um ed from collective soul it's where i take a riff or just a part of a song and get and you don't know what's coming and you tell me where it came from oh that's awesome like how it was to be Mm -hmm. we called it something i forgot what it was oh cool what are your memories of atlanta like yeah. what, what you know you're coming back to Brookhaven this weekend you're playing at this and this is a great festival by the way you're going to love it. Oh, I cannot wait. I, I hear it's a beautiful area too. So I'm great. So excited. What are your memories of Atlanta? Like wh- I have incredible memories of Atlanta because and Leslie's part of it. You guys are all part of it. 99X is a huge part of lives early days breaking um in the early 90s outside you know breaking uh, you know we came out we literally like came out of nowhere on MTV. And I remember that it was like this whole thing of like, well, will radio accept it? Well, are the songs good? They're, they look cool. They're running around the beach, but are they a good band? You know? And it was Atlanta that really said, yes, they are. That was the town that really said, this is not just something you're seeing on MTV. This is a band you need to come see in concert. And we sold, our, I think our, the most tickets we ever sold outside of Pennsylvania you know, in the first, in the early days of the band sort of exploding and starting to get radio play was um, the basketball arena there in, at, at, I think it's Georgia oh, State. Yeah. Or was the, no, it was Georgia Tech. It was Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. Yep. Yeah. And we sold eight, we sold 8,000 tickets. I was there. We had I never sold more than maybe 1,000 at that point or 800. And it was like, oh, holy wow. we sold 8,000 tickets. And I'll never forget it because we were up in the dressing room and we hear this knock on the door and all the black crows walk in. And they're all like six foot two. I mean, <laughs> all the brothers came in and they're like, what's up live? And we're like, oh my God, you know, like Atlanta rocks. You know, we, and so, yeah, I got, I got stories for Atlanta all day long because it's such an important city for the band and just so many great nights. Well, the cool thing back then and, and even now, Ed, is that we didn't just play the singles off the album. We played a lot of album tracks no. from live, which we still do because the music was so good. We were like, we're not going to just play the single. Let's go deep. And that was really important because that's what fleshed out the band for everybody. That's what allowed people to see that it was more than videos. Because, you know, it's, it's funny to talk about MTV now because it feels so, 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 so long ago in such a different era. But people forget how massive it was and how, like, you know, it's just this massive national radio station. So when you pop up on it, it's like, oh, who are these guys? Where are they from? And then it's like, oh, now we're starting to play the music. Now, you know... You guys are supporting us. Now we're playing deeper tracks. Oh, this is a band that we can really get into. And so it was a huge, huge part of uh, the band's career and, and, and those formative years. Well, in those formative years, I'll never forget, because we started playing live early. Yes. And I was driving home. I lived at 14th in, in a high rise right there, like 14th in the highway. And as I got off the exit to go home, I had my windows down. It was a great you know, Saturday afternoon or whatever. And I hear like, I alone love. I'm like, that band sounds like that band we're playing on the air live. And I pull over and I see an event and it's you guys playing a gig outside in a park at Georgia tech. Wow. Which was like pre, (laughs) yeah, like before the big moment, way early, yeah, way early. And I was like, Oh my God, I got, I did a call into the station. I remember going, Hey, I don't know what's going on, but live is playing at like student appreciation day. Yeah. I remember doing stuff like that. There was a lot of college activity, a lot right there at the, you know, yeah, 94, 95 was when we were, there was this nexus of the college thing and where we were, where the band was. And, and there was just, and then it gives you an idea of how much, like you just mentioned that, like how, how much we were actually playing. Yeah. Like how many times we were in Atlanta, wow. probably 12 months, probably four, you know, just 
working, 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 getting back and watching this thing and riding it where it will go. And um, Atlanta was a huge, huge part of it. Huge. We love talking to you, Ed. We're talking to Ed Kowalczyk from Live. You're always so upbeat and positive. <laughs> oh, thank you. I have got to say, outside of this weekend with the Cherry Blossom Festival, we are so pumped about this tour, Stone Temple Pilots and Live, the 30th anniversary yeah. of two iconic albums, Purple and Throwing Copper. And then on top of that, you got like Soul Asylum and Our Lady Peace. This is going to be incredible. It's such a great bill. I mean, all the bands are so great. And yeah, I was getting to like, you know, sending me, they're sending me the, the advertisements, you know, the video spots and the radio spots and stuff. And just hearing all the songs together, I'm like, whoa. I know. <laughs> like, I want to go to the, I want to disembody, I want to bilocate and go to this show yeah. so I can just drink, you know, so I can just <laughs> drink and stand out the soundboard. But um, I'm really excited. We met those guys. Um, well, I've, I've known the guys off and on in STP for years. And um, got to reconnect with them last year at this gig we did in Napa, California for a, it was like a special event type thing. And we got to reconnect and they were, I think we literally, within about 20 minutes, we're talking about touring together. And then, <laughs> and then it happened. So I was super excited. Yeah. Leslie, I think Our Lady Peace is only doing California shows, if I'm correct. I think here we're not getting OLP, which... I'm sure at some point. Yeah, but just the tour in general That's awesome. is going to be amazing. Yeah, that show is coming here, Maris Bank Amphitheater, on a Saturday night, August 31st. All right, live is going to be Fine. Saturday in Brookhaven. What can we expect, Ed Kowalczyk? What's that set list? Woo! Well, we are working it, man. We're getting um, we the set's great. We have um, we're going to play the one that we're playing down. Oh, we got another tour with Incubus too. We're doing so many great packages this year. With this one down in Australia, maybe that we can do that one in America as well be really fun um so yes we are working on the set to to take on there so we're getting the you know we're this being the 30th anniversary of like throwing copper we'll lean a little bit harder into throwing copper we always do anyway but maybe a few surprises in there i have a new song that's sort of morphed into the set um i put out a blues record i made a blues record right before covid with my guitar player really i did it under a different name i did it under this name goose blackstone and there was this great song i called Call leave the radio on and we just started messing around and for fun with it and started to do it as more of a live song with you know the production bigger and stuff and so we're putting that in the show and okay. fans are really digging it good so it's kind excellent of, we <laughs> somehow landed with a new song so um yeah we'll play that one and i can't wait we're gonna get everywhere we're gonna get to all the records and uh love it hopefully get everybody everyone everybody wants well ed i'm just saying if you're gonna play leave the radio on you could slip a 99x reference somewhere in there that would be nice just saying. Leave the radio just, on. Yeah, we can just change the chorus. And just exactly. put, yeah, like a 99 X chant. Like a, like a <laughs> yeah, incubus a DJ to cut it in there. <laughs> that would be perfect. All right, we'll see you this weekend. And Maybe. I want to I play Maybe. Heaven. I want to play Heaven um, quick, Please 30 do. seconds. Give me the inspiration. We're going to go into it. What's the inspiration with Heaven besides the daughter? But Yeah, well, it was written right around the time that my, you know, my first daughter was born. Like I said, she started a revolution of daughters. There's now three and a son named Paul. And I'm working on other songs, but this was, this is, they're just going to all have to enjoy this one for now until I get busy on the other two or three. I love <laughs> this song. This is live. The song is called Heaven. You'll see Ed Kowalczyk in the full band live this weekend, live, live in Brookhaven. Live, live. Also, don't forget the tickets for live with Stone Temple Pilots and Soul Asylum. Those tickets go on sale tomorrow, Friday morning, 10 a.m. Ed Kowalczyk from live. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thank Ed. you, guys. Anytime.